Good morning to everyone out there. I'm Philip Martin. I'm the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery here in Los Angeles, and I'm very excited this morning to be speaking to Sun Jik Yang about his current exhibition, Paseo, at the gallery. It usually takes just a minute there for people to come into the webinar. Oh, nice. So we have a nice group coming in. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So again, my name is Philip Martin, and I am the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery here in Los Angeles um, with my partner, Portia Hine. And I hope you've had the chance to meet Portia either at the gallery or uh, at the fairs. We have a new location in Glassell Park at Verdugo Plaza. And if you are uh, in the area, please come by. If you have any questions about the works that we're talking about today, just feel free to send me an email. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to be talking today with Sungjik Yang, who is a fantastic painter, and we have the pleasure of showing his uh, really remarkable exhibition, Paseo, um, and Sung's going to talk to us perhaps just a little bit about it. Uh, rainy morning here in Southern California, Sung, uh, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm at uh, I'm at Art Center where I teach because my Wi Fi is not working in my studio. Oh sure. So yeah, but it's very near from my studio. My studio is in the mall, as you know. Yeah. So, do you uh, do you like uh, teaching there at uh, at Art Center? Yeah, it's a huge part of my life. Yeah, I've been teaching for three years. You know, I really enjoy working with my students. So. Yeah. Well, we had a very nice uh, interaction yesterday with Salomon Huerta, who is uh, a person that's been really important to you over your uh, your time here in LA. Yes, I met Salomon uh, when I was about like third, fourth term in our center, like second year in our center. And then, yeah. you know, he was the one who introduced contemporary painting language. Mm -hmm. uh, figured in language and it was you know he's always supportive very yeah. supportive when you say that he introduced figurative painting language like, what do you mean like like contemporary figurative painters mm -hmm. like freud like eric fischel alice neal because i never knew that person those yeah persons. well we've talked a little bit about alice neal who you really uh like yeah, I mean, I love her work. <laughs> <laughs> and we also both idolized uh, Edward Manet, too. Sure. And why and we, are you interested in Manet or uh, or Alice Neal? Well, I love their technique. Mm -hmm. I love their technique. I love, um, you know, especially like Alice Neal. I admire her as, as a person, too. Mm -hmm. She was a spotter, which is amazing, too. And, you know, during her period, you know, no one really painted portrait because abstract expressionism was, you know, they're taking all the glories. But yeah, but as a figure painter today, like I'm able to do this because of her. What, what do you mean by that? Like only few people painted portrait during that time, like Fred mm -hmm. Porter or Alice Neal. So, you know, I value that legacy. Yeah. Well, it does seem like, you know, in terms of um, making portraits, do you feel like the kind of engagement that you're having with your sitters or the people that you present, do you think there's something kind of unique in in painting portraits the way that, that you're doing so in this show? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, of course, they are unique. Um. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a practice that's very, still very interesting to artists? Or why do you think it is that there aren't so many portrait painters as a whole? Oh. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just yeah. I've been liking portraits since I was in, I never really interested in, in like human faces yeah. before I came to the center. And then I took some... Uh, foundation classes, like head painting classes, uh, and then, um, and then, um, uh, and I, after I took some of uh, those classes at Art Center, I started liking the process of making paintings, portrait paintings, 
And then I started looking at people's faces. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think like taking, I don't know, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I really like about your work and I think that people really respond to mm. is that there's a real feeling of um, a kind of love, you know, for the people that you're painting. You... Mm it's very palpable. And you've said that, you know, you like to kind of just capture people's spirit in a sense. And mm -hmm. um, that seems like one of the great joys of encountering a portrait subject is having the experience of encountering someone um, in through, through a painting, um, but in a certain sense, almost as if you're with them and you really convey this kind of deep humanity in how you, in how you paint your pictures. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, the, this Arnold family, this painting you're looking at is Arnold family. It's very special to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I met them in the mall mm -hmm. where my student is and then Arnold was sitting with his children and I thought it was such a beautiful moment. Maybe I mm -hmm. feel more connected because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. uh, I never thought if I'm if I have it, if I have if I'm having a children. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah, I feel very connected with Arnold with with his children. And also I have a sister uh, who uh she's four years young older than I am. Mm -hmm. So it reflected to my childhood too, by looking at Junior and Amira. And what was the process by which you spoke to them about painting their their picture? So, so first of all, I, um, you know, I showed them my Instagram page, uh -huh. and, and make sure you know I don't you know I I don't want to look weird or or strange or anything. <laughs> Sure. So, you know, I just told them, like, I'm a painter, you know, uh, I paint, like, people, like, you know, I know, or people on the street. So I saw them, I saw you guys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to capture you guys. So you know, can I take a photo of you guys? <laughs> yeah. And they're very kind. They said yes. And then I took, you know, several photos of them and then took it to my studio and then, you know, um, make painting. And they're very happy with it. And one of the things I think that's really cool is that um, they then you then invite them to the studio to come and enjoy and see the painting and to, and to enjoy that process with you. Yeah, they I often do that. Yeah, because I like sharing my work. I mean, yeah. I hope they like it. and I would like to show them in person because because I like to show all the scale and textures. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if they had they ever had a, a painting painted of them before Had they ever had that experience no it's first no one yeah it's a remarkable thing to uh to share with people mm -hmm. so yeah so this is joanne uh, my partner and my girlfriend so we've mm -hmm. been together for seven years uh but it's been only two years since i've painting her mm-hmm but because I never thought she looked interesting in my painting. Mm -hmm. But after five years, I realized, oh, you know, there's some direction I can capture you. Mm -hmm. So how she became my muse. Yeah. Well, you've painted her several times. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful painting. I mean, there's almost a kind of, to me, it feels like liquid. You sense the liquid quality of the paint. Do you want to talk a little bit about just the technique of how some of these areas kind of came together? Oh, because I use wet on wet technique. Maybe mm -hmm. it looks so good. Um, I paint, it means paint directly on top of wet paint. Mm -hmm. The technique used by like Manet, Sargent. It's very traditional wet technique. So I use uh, poppy oil, which is slow drying medium. So keep mm -hmm. my paint slow mm -hmm. and also I section by section so um so I can keep deal with wet paint mm -hmm. one of the but things sometimes I have to deal with yeah sorry no no go ahead yeah but sometimes I have to deal with dry paint but you know not often 
So one of the things that we talked about too is, um, or well, in going back to the, I mean, this is such a nice moment that I was going to point out that um, Daniel Dove, who was at the opening mentioned, he was sort of seeing how skilled you are at defining planes with temp paint with temperature as opposed to value. Um, here we do have some value in temperature, but it's something that's really wonderful about your your sense of color in these in these works. Do we pause out there for a second? Yeah. Um, so, so that's yeah. What about this painting? So that's another series. Mm -hmm. um, so the painting you showed previously, Joanne uh, reclining and Joanne looking in the mirror, those are the series. Mm -hmm. And space is in Joanne's apartment mm -hmm. in the mall. Mm -hmm. uh, so I referenced two, I remember I referenced two paintings. So this one I referenced uh, Geo The Geographer by Vermeer. Yeah. And, the free and then the, the one we saw is from Poland yeah. by Edward Manet. Totally. Um, but to me, this is like a quarantine painting. So we stay at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just having fun. How, when you're working wet on wet, how do you define the edges between the different color areas or between the different um, parts of the composition? Oh, I just let it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, um, when you paint wet on wet, the edge, you know, the color is going to, you know, mix around. So it's not going to yeah. be like solid. So, mm -hmm. But I like, that, you know, I like that effect. So, you know, I just let it happen, just paint and let it happen. And if it doesn't work, you know, scrape it and, re and rework. If mm -hmm. I like it, just leave it. So That's is there, I do you find that, that once that you start with a kind of initial drawing, a large scale drawing, but then as you work, do you find that there's a kind of um, improvisation in a sense, meaning that you have to respond to, to what the paint's doing wet on wet as it's com as those colors are combining and those brush strokes are combining on the canvas itself? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that you've always liked doing or is that something that's come together as you've sort of pushed this wet on wet style? No, I'm not, you know, it just came out naturally mm -hmm. because I'm classically trained and um, that's the technique I learned since I painting, uh, since I, that's what I learned from our center. So yeah, uh, in our center, we have to paint every, every, you know, every class we have to paint, um, every day, every week we have to paint light model. So we yeah. only have five hours for each session. Yeah. So. We we have to you kind of have to figure out everything when it's wet. So I just got used to it. And this is a nice moment because this is raw canvas, which is something that appears in your paintings at various moments. Yeah, it just, you know, it just happened. You know, I didn't plan anything. I just painted and sometimes yeah. I have feeling I need to just stop there. Well, you can use the color of the canvas as a very high value or even as a color itself, you know, here it is again in the phone here. Mm -hmm. So who are the people in this painting? So it's Joanne and Ada and Cece. Mm -hmm. So one of the left side girl is Joanne and Ada and Cece. And they're, they're friends since they are in um, elementary school. Wow. It was Cece's birthday night and yeah and I, and then i painted them yeah well i love this painting because each one of the figures absolutely feels like it they have their own personality they feel very very different um was it challenging to paint to paint them and achieve that effect yeah because i know them very well so i know their personality their character so that was a little more challenge but you know uh, was that a different experience than if you're painting someone that you don't know as well? Yeah, like when I paint strangers, when I paint people I'm not close with, you know, there's more 
freedom. Mm -hmm. But more like I can put my interpretation more. But yeah. when I'm painting people, mm -hmm. I have very clear like vision and definition which they should look like. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I mean, I like you know, but the approach is same. Yeah. Well, I would just, again, this is such a beautiful painting. I mean, it's so strong. The color feeling is really perfect. And again, some of these moments of edge interaction to me are just really thrilling. Um, just beautiful, beautiful painting. Thank you. This one came from um, Warthos Secrets painting, uh, Mrs. Um, Bollett. Oh, really? <laughs> I was looking, yeah, I was looking at a painting and then... Uh, you know, I was, I wanted to make something similar to that. <laughs> so I joined the post. <laughs> so how does that work? Do you sometimes um, find a person, like, do you often have a, a composition from a previous painter or maybe you've seen a painting and you think it would be interesting to make something that relates to it or, or do you sometimes... Yeah. Yeah, I do that sometimes, but not all the time. Not all the time. Um, yeah, because when you look at good painting, uh, when I look at good painting, it makes me uh, want to paint, go back to studio and paint. Yeah. So uh, when that happened, I, you know, sometimes I ask them to like like specific pose, like the painting or specific yeah. composition, but not uh, but not all the time. Yeah. Now, who who is this guy? So his name is uh, Meline. He's the um, Group group of um perform uh they're the performance um yeah uh it's called Urban Crew yeah uh, dancing dancing performers from Philippines uh huh and they're the contestants uh, of America new uh, America America got uh, oh sorry America's Got Talent they are and the show I did not I did not yeah. know that they are and then the show open at Pasadena Civic Auditorium Center. So it's right next to my studio. So, so where I did saw you... them on... Yeah, so I saw them on the street. So, and I invited them to my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some story and then they did, actually they did their performance in my studio. That was amazing. They did a performance and... in your studio? In my studio, yes. <laughs> That's incredible. And then I have a I have a video of it. No you know, what's and then actually they made it into semi-final. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. But they but they said if they win the competition, they can stay in US and leave here. Wow. But then but then you know they didn't win the competition, but still it made, it's really amazing that they got into semi-final. Wow. So I had no idea that there was that much at stake for them in the competition. If they won, they would have been allowed to stay in the United States. I don't know. I don't know the story, um, but maybe if they win, they'll, you know, maybe they'll win, they'll get some money. <laughs> yeah. And then also, yeah, there's a prize. And then also, like, I don't know, some other company. I don't know something like yeah. you when you win the competition, the competition, yeah. something you know you'll have a lot of things. Well, again, you know when I see your paintings, I mean they are they just feel this kind of really deep humanity, and painting does that for people. You just are able to capture this feeling, um, and so hearing more about their story is. I mean, I already thought that they were just a remarkable group of pe of images of people. Um, and again, this is just so beautiful, all the the way the parts have come together. Thank you. You can see the kind of lip pierce and the 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 dye in the hair. And how about how about these two? Oh, so uh, it's Carson and E, mm -hmm. and they're at Habotica. Uh, he is my college friend, and we both went to our center. And then I, and then they live actually right next to our studio. There's an apartment mm -hmm. right next to our studio. So, uh, I went to their house. Uh, first of all, I asked them if they can post for me, and um, and then I went to their house, and then, um, and I painted them. They're married, mm -hmm. and 
um, also they also came to my studio and saw the saw the painting. So there's great moments in this painting. How many photographs do you take of them before? How many photographs do you take of them? What's the the photographing process? I take. I'm not good at like taking photos. I never took photo class. Uh, yeah. So like what I usually do, I just click, click, click. I just keep he, taking photo like much much as possible because I just want to try to capture natural moment. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you, that's, do you give them any kind of instructions or do you just let them basically decide uh, how they want to? No, I don't. No, I don't give them uh, any specific instructions. I just let them pose. You know, all I tell them is try to be natural. You know, forget your you know front of the camera, and but looking at me, please look at me, and then. All I do is just click those okay. things. Well, one part about this painting that kind of really drew me to it immediately is this beautiful feeling down here that he's kind of absentmindedly playing with his uh, sandals or slippers, the way that you can see that he's got part of it wedged in between some of his toes is this really beautiful very poignant kind of moment or the way in which the, the the how the cat is sitting it's kind of hiked back his shorts just a little bit um those kinds of details are just gorgeous and also like these socks that he's wearing which um the way that they've been you have this beautiful kind of shape or the feeling of the swoosh or is the cat's tail in his hand? Yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. And then yeah, I... He was... Go ahead. Yeah, he was holding um, his cat's tail. It's, incre it's incredible. And then this feeling here, how he really, with his lack of hair... He really sits in that flat plane in this really interesting way and how the hair on this figure, like you just feel this, it's just a great painting. <laughs> so it's such a good painting, it's incredible. And this is another one of the same couple, but here what's really yeah. interesting is that the photo color itself, to me is so much more palpable. Mm -hmm. Is that, did you feel like the palette of the photo changed here or do you have any thoughts on this, on this picture? Yeah. I mean, just, uh, uh, you know, I use different palette for mm -hmm. this, for both painting. I just wanted to show a different atmosphere. Yeah. Um, um, and well, this I, painting took me a lot longer than the previous one. Well, it's a bigger painting for starters. It's bigger painting too. Yeah. It also has this phthalo driven uh, color palette that's a little mm -hmm. bit different than the other works in the show. Yeah. And then, and then I also love this, uh, I love this moment with the, like the paper towel dispenser that it's yeah, yeah. really right down at the end of the roll. They're just these incredible details that reflect back on them. You know, that's that feeling about Manet too, when you look at his paintings, you know, he was the painter of modern life. That's what he was called. Or that's that's an, an idea that was out there at the time, a Baudelairean idea. I think it's Baudelaire. And then, um, you know, you have the art historians kind of, there's the book, I guess, is I think it's, um, I think it's Thomas Crowe. But, um, you know, it's interesting what these are gonna, what do you think these paintings are gonna look like in a hundred years? In hundred years, yeah, like, uh, hundred years later or hundred years. A <laughs> hundred years from now, they strike me as this amazing record of our time. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, hopefully that's uh, as a painter, as a as a figure painter, that's that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's it's an interesting idea. So we we've only got about five minutes left. Um. Okay. Are there anything you might like to say that we haven't had a chance to talk about thus far? Well, I can, I can talk about this painting that yeah, we're please. looking at. 
Yeah, of course. His name, his name is David, and he works at the antique store. Yeah, in the Pacific. So yeah. I saw him, you know, playing guitar, and I was thinking about the Spanish singer painting by Manet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, it's an incredible moment. I, this is an incredible moment. This painting. Yeah, I feel very California when I. <laughs> Well, I love that I I love in a certain sense, you know, you can really feel the um the the this tag from the from the thrift store or from the pawn shop or or secondhand store that he's working in. You can really feel how the corner of it is really touching his leg and exerting just the least amount of pressure. You know, he has this beautiful wristband, the incredible shirt. You know, it's and then of course the plot, the fact that this is this flat plane of plywood is so interesting with regard to kind of what this is, how it's beautiful. The fingers, the way the fingers sit on it, the way the light is coming from behind. It's just a great, it's just a great painting. Really gorgeous, amazing picture. Thank you so much. Is there a moment in a painting like this where, you know, there's so many elements? in this um store are you ever like oh my god i can't believe i have to paint all these different parts yeah i like <laughs> going yeah yeah definitely i like going to i go there so often and there's so many things that i would like to paint but you know it's just, there's so much. I mean, all these interlocking aspects of just, you know, the cup, the, just the whole thing. It's just, it's just, it's just fantastic. And who is this person? Oh, his name is Louis, another friend of mine in college. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and he makes painting. He's a, he, he's a, per, a performance artist too. He makes videos, installation. Yeah. So I went to his studio and painted him. Yeah. Um, I love the feet on this one. It's a great painting. It, and his hair and his hair. And it's just real engagement. He seems so engaged with the viewer. And this kinds of these kinds of moments. You know, that's the whole conversation that um of kind of a in the whole notion of speaking across the picture plane. Is fat is really a fascinating one in art history. This is one of your favorite paintings. It is one of my favorite paintings, yes. Um uh, I painted this, it was very quick. I did it very fast. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, but I just like the freshness of paint, mm -hmm. the application. So that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. But it's Biju and Samer. Um, they both are LA-based artists. And mm -hmm. Biju is uh, she's an artist known for her portrait painting. Yeah, and Samer is an artist, and he runs his own gallery in uh, in Pas uh, uh, in uh, Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And and I met them from the group show because mm -hmm. I thought they're first of all I thought they're sister and brother. They look uh -huh. like each other. Yeah. Uh, so I reach out to them, and then, and I ask them to pose for me. It's a. It's their feeling is so. Um, they're so centered, and of course, then we have some more kind of raw canvas here, and of course the, you the way you paint, feet is really interesting because you've often got them moving towards the front of the picture plane. And then there's just two more paintings, I believe, in our selection. Yes. Yeah, this is uh, Mansi, mm -hmm. also my uh, also my college friend. I painted her twice, but you know the first one didn't come out good, mm -hmm. and then the second one came out, I think, well. Yeah, it's a fantastic picture. And the last painting that we have here is, uh, is it Damien? Damien, yeah. So I found him in the mall. Mm -hmm. 
and then I invited to me um uh, invited to my studio. Mm -hmm. And we did photo shoot and then I made painting of him. How did he end up looking down and away from the camera? You know, I tried, I just wanted to, I don't know, like I try like, you know, he. Hmm. You know, I just took like a lot of photos and then mm -hmm. try to get the one I like. And then looking, there was the, there was a photo looking down, like him looking down. And I really liked that moment. So I, I just painted it. It's a very powerful kind of moment. And actually I'll flip through just so people can see the install. And we're basically at the, at the end here. Um, but that painting is really remarkable in the, in the show here because it has such power it really holds that wall against these other two much, much larger works. And this is a nice kind of moment to kind of end our conversation today. Do you have anything left that you might like to say that we didn't get to? Well, I just want to say I'm very happy about the show. Um, I'm very happy to show my work in a, such a great space. Um, very well, pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you. And I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of walk through and talk about the works with us. The show is up through April 22nd. So if you're in uh, Glassell Park or if you're getting a coffee at uh, Lemon Poppy, come by. Uh, we'd be delighted to uh, see you. Thanks so much for joining us today, Sung. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Have a good Bye. one. Take care.